Welcome to session 16. This is a special session. Um, we're coming at you pre-recorded, so I'm sorry about that. We're not live today, um, but I have Susan with us, and we're doing the part two to the art glass session that we did last week. That's right. We're going to continue. This time, we're going to give you lots of technical information, and we're going to talk about artwork, because artwork is the basis, the things that you need to know to make your stuff original and really cool. So today, I'm going to give you some top secrets from my group as a, just a special thing. And I'm going to do a little illustrator. We're going to do a little Photoshop. We're going to talk about how to create um, imagery um, that is uniquely your own. Wow, we have a busy session then, don't we? Yeah, it's going to be right. fun. Now, we did end last week, or if you watched uh, on Tuesday, our session on June 30th was our session with Susan. And we did, we had some technical difficulties at the end, and I apologize for that. So we didn't get to all the questions, and there was a comment that was made, and we want to address that. Susan was doing some enamels. That's correct. And I started coughing. And, and someone it, mentioned, you Somebody should. mentioned it. And so really, when you're working with enamels and when you're working with glass powders, you really should wear a dust mask. I was concerned that you wouldn't be able to hear me speaking, but I think I did inhale a little bit of that, so I got all So coughing. she had a little tickle in her throat, but we just wanted to make sure that you yes. use safety, wear your mask yeah. when you're, ever, you're dealing with enamels or glass powders and, and so forth. So okay. what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a lot about um, artwork, because like I said, artwork is the most important thing. We'll show you the postcards. Yes. So this is an example where I've uh, created some um, different components and put them together to create my own art. Now, like on a couple of these image, images in the back, you'd say, oh, well, did you find that artwork on um, you know, adobe.com, adobestock.com, because that's what I like. But yes, but no, in that the deer came from one image, the trees came from another image, and the leaves came from another. The same with this one. The telephone pole, I'm gonna actually bring that one up and show you the original art, which had a lot more telephone poles in it, but it did not have the bushes, it didn't have the birds, and show you how to take things apart and then put them together to make it your own uh, so unique. All this is fused glass, where you've, and if you're not familiar with fused glass, you can go back and watch session 15. We talked about the kiln. Yes. Um, Susan has a kiln that, that you can contact her about. It's a, it's a great kiln because it's, it's very spacious and the fact that it runs off of 110 volt and it has programs. Yes, we did. We showed you a little bit about that in the part one of this session. Uh, we talked about the kiln and how you could use it in your house with a, the regular outlet and how easy it is to operate because I know that a lot of you that have been doing awards have not done anything with fused glass or hot glass. So this is kind of like another step in your repertoire that you can use with the racist films. Now, someone did ask a question, what is the size of that working area of the kiln? And do you have that size? 17 inches? 17 inches square. <laughs> so you can do a piece as large as this. This piece is um, 16 by 13. So as you can see, you can do some really, really large artwork in this um, kiln that you can use um, at home or in your um, business if you don't want to install the 220. So and almost all, of, actually all the projects that we're showing would fit into that kiln just fine. Um, right, and, if, and then we did the intro with you to Art Glass. It was on session seven. Yes. So it was the, the basic intro of kind of branching into fused glass. Now this is something that she does that's not fused, but you can kind of see this is a glass paperweight. You can see how thick it is. And then she has blasting on the front as well as blasting on the back. And it's creating a great design here. And you put it up and it looks just beautiful with a two-sided edge. Yeah, so that's the thing that we want to really stress today is that whether you're using a traditional blank or whether you're doing fused glass, whether you're doing gifts and glassware, it's the artwork that makes it special. It's the artwork that you can create. So this is really fun because I thought it's really neat. This is um, like a European postcard, old-fashioned postcard. This artwork came off of adobestock.com, and we're going to go there and show you. We also have um, a website that has fonts um, that are free. So we're going to show you how to do that, and we're going to show you how to create a mask where you can do it in the round, meaning 
a three-dimensional imagery. And because this, um, this glass is not straight up and down, we're going to show you how to curve your mask to make it easy to apply. So what graphic programs are you working in? Well, on this one, I get the initial artwork out of Adobe. But lots of times, because I'm not as familiar with Illustrator or not as versed in it as I am in Photoshop. Lots of times I'll create the vector in um, Illustrator and then I'll bring it over to uh, Photoshop because okay. you can import your vector images. Right. And then I can do some other work with it. There are some features with Photoshop that I find a little easier. But believe me, I don't have such a knowledge of Illustrator, but I can show you how you can still open it up, a few of the basics that you really need to know to work on it without, um, you know, having to take bunches of classes on it. So basically, I mean, I know that I found artwork, like let's say vector stock, and I found a few designs, and then you download it, and then it's all bundled together. Yes. So you're actually going to show us how to. Break we're going to dissect apart. it. Yeah, we're going to dissect it. So if you want birds out of a, a thing, or if you want uh, animals or trees or anything out of one of those vector things, you can personalize it. I'm also going to show you that if you pick an image and your line is a little too fine to make a great mask, how you can click on that line and add thickness to it. So we're going to show you some great tricks to making your mask. All right, so we're going to move on. Uh, one of the things that um, I wanted to talk about was in the glass where it's really fun, but I know if you've done etching on glasses that are shaped like this or even have even a more severe really steep angle, mm -hmm. Yeah, if I make my mask straight, um, it won't curve around like So this one is straight, and that was that's okay for the paperweight, which we showed. Okay, so that's for the paperweight. But for the glass, if I did a straight mask and I put the mask on, everything kind of gets tilted. So what we're going to do is show you a great trick in Photoshop how to make your mask conform to the shape of your glass. So that's what we're going to do first. Wonderful. And I will show you how to make a mask, how you actually expose it and wash it out once we're done with the artwork segment. All yeah. right. So if you want to hand me the glass. I will. This is a really fun trick. Does it matter? OK, either glass. It doesn't okay. really matter, because what you want to do is you want to figure out what the curvature of your object is. So this is like where you have your text, if you had text wrapping around, yeah, and then it kind of frowns or it goes to a smile. Exactly. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of paper like this, and you're going to wrap your glass, and then I'm going to take... Do you want a marker? A pen's fine. Okay. Okay, so I got a pen, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set it here so I can get a, a line. And I am going to simply draw around the glass. Now what this is going to do is when I take this off, even though this is a fairly minor curve or a minor um, adjustment. It makes a difference, doesn't actually it? Actually, it doesn't really matter. Get my tape off. <laughs> Here. <laughs> okay. So we're going to take that apart, and you're going to get to see that this gentle curve is what the slope of this glass is. So what I did on this is I took my mask, and as you can see, it's pretty close to the curve there. Oh, wow. Look at that. So that's your pen so, mark. Yeah, so that's my pen mark. So what I do is I take a picture. You can take a picture of this with your iPhone or whatever phone you've got, and I'm going to import it, would import it into um, Photoshop. And then we're going to show you how to warp your artwork. Smart. So you warp your artwork because what you put into your artwork, you put a little extra time into your artwork to get what's going to be perfect. And then if you're going to make 50 of these glasses, you're not like struggling to make sure that the trees aren't like leaning over or something else is. And then what I'll do once I put it in and I do the curve, then I'm going to print it out on just regular paper. And I'm going to put it on the glass and then I'm going to see if it matches. So if it doesn't match, or if one of my trees is leaning over too much or whatever, then I can go back with my warp tool and I can straighten it up. Okay. So that is just a really great way to, um, to make your mask tip, fit. Especially yeah. when you're dealing with text and just making sure that artwork is lined correctly. That's right. Now on this one, 
Um, I could have done the same thing, but what I ended up doing on this one was I just cut my mask. I cut my mask right here. So I put the trees on and then I put the deer on the front and then I just joined it. So we could, uh, we actually could do that. <clears throat> I've got one here. But um, well, nice, you did a good job. I can't tell where you joined it. Good job. Yeah. So just for fun, let's go ahead and do that. Do you have the, um, actually, that's pretty sticky. So this is pretty good. But I don't have scissors. Okay, I can get you. Okay, I can get so you. Liz, Liz is going to get me some scissors. And by the way, um, she could show you, she's going to put on the screen um, where we get the imagery, and that's adobestock.com. Okay. And we are going to go to that site, so it's going to be really cool. So in a case like this, I'm just going to cut my mask. And we're just going to place it over where it is so it kind of mimics this. And I'm going to fold it back. See, it popped right there, so that way I can just take this little... Okay, you're just going to separate that. Yeah, we're going to separate it here. Let me move this out of your way. Okay, so that way we get it started. I like to make sure it's on there. And then I'm going to just gently pull it back. It's not lining up exactly where we had the other one, but it gives you an idea how I created it. Okay, so there we've got one half. And now we're going to take our deer. Sometimes, okay. yeah, because you brought it up because you frosted the bottom. Yeah, I frosted the bottom. You know, and I, I knew that, but seeing it in place. Yeah, it so it looks sense. like snow. So this has a little bit of uh, an edge on it, and that kind of helps sometimes when you're peeling the mask off. So we're going to put the reindeer here. These guys are a little bigger. And then we will need some tape. Okay. So let me separate the mask from the carrier. There we go. Stick it down there. Now one thing I'm seeing here that I want to fix before I go any further, and this is really great because it's repositionable. What I'm going to do is I see here, if I'm careful, I can line the snow up here to there. So this would be a little bit different than the way I etched it before. But that way my snow is going to line up and I only have to cut one side. So okay. Does that make sense? Right. So you're Great. showing us how you, how you line, up the, line two parts, up the two parts. The okay. two parts of the mask, yeah. So then I'm Versus gonna, having it wrap all the way yeah, around. Yeah, so I'm going to peel that and make sure that sticks. And then I'm just going to uh, take the razor blade and I'm going to make the snow join right here. And then I'll have a uh, piece of tape up here. Yeah. yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to tape the top of it up here. And here, where, the, where it doesn't quite line up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the snow and that come okay. together. See? Go. So it's kind of like a little snow drift. Right. Nice. But since this is not, uh, this is a glass that's, you know, been done the second time, it's going to kind of show you. Right. So you would just tape around. Then we're just going to tape up the rest of this. And then um, I like to turn them upside down when I'm in the blaster okay. because I'm doing this and blast all around there. That makes but, sense. But that shows you how to join, a, that's how to join a straight mask. But because of the snow, that one's a really easy thing to do. Okay. Um, but if I was going to do the Santa, you know, I would struggle with the fact that the trees were not straight. So that's why we're going to show you how to do the artwork. So we're going to move now on to uh, creating the artwork. Okay. And um, printing and making masks. All right, right. That's great. Okay. So Susan has her computer set up. Yeah. So I'm going to come over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of great resources that you're going to totally love. So we're going to go on screen here. And I'm going to introduce you to this. Now, I like adobestock.com. Um, they don't pay me or anything. But, <laughs> but for, um, for this, it's great because 
if you go to the free vector site, so many times your uh, selection is really limited. So right. what I'm going to do is um, show so you. So Adobe Stock, are you paying a monthly fee for this, or are you paying per design? Yeah, yeah, that's the nice thing about Adobe Stock is it's a monthly fee of $29, and I get 10 images a month. But the thing is, I don't always use all of the images, so um, they roll over. So if you look here, I've, I've logged in. Okay, so they can see your screen. Yeah. Let me see here. So she's up on the top right-hand corner. It says uh, Susan, so it's her profile. Yeah, so I've logged in, and I've got my Manage account, and you can see here <laughs> that I've gotten up to 208 assets. That means I have 208 images that I've built up over the year that I haven't used. That you, oh, you haven't used, okay. Right, so even, because if, if I don't use, um, the, you know, the 10 images a month, I'm just going to get credit. Well, so done. that's great. Okay, great. And the other thing about this is um, you can also check your license history here. Yep. Okay. And it's going to show me everything in the last year or two that I bought. Uh, and the nice thing about that is once you've purchased it, if you can't find the mask or you can't figure out where it, you could just go back and you can re-download for free. So I'm going to oh, download nice. there. Oh, that's a great feature. Yeah, so that's really cool. Um, a couple of other aspects about this. I'm going to go back to um, back to this and uh, search. Okay, so they're very specific. So in uh, a case like this, if I wanted trees, I'm going to say trees. Okay. And so it's going to bring up all the trees. Now, if you notice, there's going to be... Um, photographs and all that stuff and I don't really want to have to sift through all the photos so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to um, <clears throat> so go to your filters filters so okay. see how that says filters mm -hmm. so that's going to bring up this panel and it's going to say no I don't want to see everything I want to see um, go come down here to subcategory I just want to see vectors so I click on that, and what's going to happen is it's going to break up only vectors. And then once I have the selection I like, I can hide the panel. Okay, so okay. now I've just got vectors. So I can go through, and I can see all the kind of trees. Um, or if I wanted to do birds. Looks like we have a lot of trees and birds. <laughs> <laughs> I love trees and birds. <laughs> yeah. So then it's going to just bring up specifics. Now, if I wanted to say, okay... Um, Cardinals. It would only bring up cardinals. So it's really nice because you can really plug in um, and be very specific. And then um, here, um, the other thing that's really great is if I like something here, then I can click on this little um, icon and it says save the library. So what that'll do is it'll bring up the library and it says bees. Well, this is not a bee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manage it and I'm going to go down to my birds. So you have a file of your bees, your birds, your trees. Yeah. So when I'm doing a project, I generally like to name the folder as sure. the project because then I don't Keep have to sift organized. through. So then when I go to my libraries here, pull it up. It takes just a minute for it to show up. Let's say view all. Whoop. Okay, it's going to show me all of the libraries that I've saved. So this is really cool. So if I want to go to bees... It's going to show me all of the images that I had saved, or butterflies, or whatever. But it's just really nice because then this becomes kind of like your personal site. Right, keeping it organized. Right, keeps your stuff organized, um, lets you re-download if... Um, now i got to tell you, selecting favorites, Yeah. I do that with... Uh, clothing apps <laughs> go through I like those shoes save so I have my little folders of things that I want to buy yeah so anyway this is just a wonderful resource and um, like I said if I want to go back and look at my history and I want to re-download um, I can do that so I just wanted to show you this as uh, one of my favorite resources now I have another resource I would like to show you and this one is free this is great this is Dafont dot com yes okay and the neat thing about this is what I'm gonna do is as you can see it's gonna give you um, you know techno gothic basic script I love calligraphy okay if you want like graffiti or something really wild it has that too so I'm gonna click on graffiti now when I get into this I have this window here that says preview okay and I can say um, 
my favorite, and I spell, stuff. Or if you wanted to put your name or whatever. Um, but the, you, you are going to display an M, an F, an S. So. Yeah, because a lot of times when you're looking at fonts, you go, well, I don't know what the S looks like because right. it's not showing an S. But this way, you hit submit right here. And then the phrase that you chose shows up, and that makes it so much easier to um, pick your font. I mean, this is really cool. Now, this is where you picked out some of your fonts for like the postcard, like the little, yes. the little writing of the address. Yeah, I like a lot of handwritten things, so I do ha tend to use the scripts and the calligraphy fonts the most. But I'm gonna show you real quickly that if I wanted to go into something like, um, let's say, medieval, something totally different. See? Yep. Isn't that cool? So it gives you, it's just a, a wonderful resource. So I um, don't want to spend too much time, but I did want to say these two resources I highly recommend. So the fonts are free. Oh yeah, this is free. Now you can donate to the author Okay. Uh, if you want. And I'd, then download it. And then you download it. So I'll download this font and it'll come up. I know it up. kind of takes a few minutes for it to all download, I believe. Or It's pretty quick, pretty quick. So, but as you can see, it's just a fun resource for creating your artwork. So now, what I've done is I'm going to um, this image that I got off of uh, Adobe Stock. Now, I've opened this up in Illustrator. Now, if you're not familiar with Illustrator, there's just a couple of quick things you need to know. Uh, these top arrows are kind of like neutral. This is selecting all. So, so the top left is selecting all. Yeah, so that's going to grab everything. And then that is going to select an so your individual arrow item. that's to the right is going to is your um, direct select. Yeah, that's the direct select. Now, in this case, I've already ungrouped it, but lots of times when you open an image, it's grouped, and it's really important to know that if you're grouped, you need to come here and say ungroup. Sometimes you have to ungroup it multiple times to get the image to come apart. Now, do you have to select over the whole image and then select ungroup, or is it just as long as your um, if you're selection on, tool's there? If you're on the main tool right here and you say ungroup, it should ungroup. Okay. Uh, but, like I said, sometimes you'll have multiple things grouped. So the first thing I've done is I've got the background I'm going to get rid of. All right, because we, mm -hmm. we work, and um, for those of you that are new to setting up your artwork, Everything that's black is what will be blasted. Right. So we're working in black and white artwork, so there's color you want to either change it to a black or white, or you want to discard it if you don't need it. And that was just the background. You really that's didn't right. need that. That's right. And Liz, you want to hold up this picture here? So this is how we created this artwork. Okay. We've got the telephone pole. Well, you can see in this image here that there's a lot of telephone poles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit ungroup. I may have to do it twice. Oh, nope, there we are. So now that I've ungrouped it, I can take these and put them to the side, and this is the one I want. That's the one you want to use. Yeah, so, that's so what this you is have really here. cool. So then if I'm going to create the mask in vector, I'm going to do um, new, and I'll set it up as uh, 14 by 11 because that's the size of the film that we get for our uh, electrolyte system. So I'm going to say, um, telephone and birds. I always like to name my files because if I name them then I can kind of do a search and find, except you can see here I <laughs> misspelled that. <laughs> Typical. Okay, the other thing is, uh, let's see, let's open that up and then I have a new one. So I'm going to log back over here. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to copy and then I'm going to pop over here and I'm going to paste. And then there I've got the base for the next part of the artwork. Now, okay, so let's say if I wanted, um, I want to create the, the birds and things that are in there. Right. What I'm going to do is go to another vector that I pulled up, and this is birds flying. And also this is the birds that uh, we're going to be showing you this mask in a little yeah. bit. so let me, I'll pull that while you're doing that. Yeah, so what we're going to do is, again, I've already worked on this image multiple times, so it's not grouped. There is one other thing that, uh, when you're working on an illustrator, that can be a problem if you can't get it to come apart, or if you take the bird from here and you put it over here and it disappears, it means that the artist has put a mask over it. So 
The other tool for getting things to work for you is to come down to here to um, to text wrap or mask, and you're going to release. See these? See how it says clipping mask right. and compound and mask, it's but it's grayed out. That means I've undone it. Okay. If it was, uh, if it did have a mask on it, that would be there, and then I could scroll over and it, it would say it. release mask. Okay. Okay. So that uh, really confounded so me. So here is your. Here are the birds uh, for this artwork piece. If you can see this. So the birds are what we use, or you used. Yeah, for we used your to make that beautiful plate. Plate. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some birds. Okay, I'm going to copy those, and then I'm going to go back to my telephone and birds. Click off of that, and I'm going to put my birds in the artwork. Now, there is a trick here. If you didn't want those to be on the same layer, I'm going to have to open up my layers. And here we're on layer one. If I wanted those to be on a separate layer, I'm going to want to say new layer. And the reason I say that is because... Let's click off on this one first. Oh, delete. Okay, so I'm back on that new layer you can see in my window. Mm -hmm. I'm going to paste. Now I have two separate just layers. Just move this window down just a tad so they can see it on the screen. Just grab it here and move it down. Just move it down. Oh. They're not seeing it on the screen. Oh. There we go. There we go. Oh, that's right, because we're in front of yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, so now I've got my two layers and I've got my birds on this layer. Now, as you're working with artwork, you may want to compose it here. And then when you go to print it, all you're going to do is click the eyeball and it'll make it disappear. So that way I could actually print these off the same thing and get them in two different layers. Right, because if you remember, this is multiple layers. So we have like, let's say the telephone poles on one layer, the grass on another, and the birds on another. So you, you have three different masks that you are creating, one for each layer. Right, but now if I'm going to do it all in one, or if I'm going to make, um, say, I did the birds here, for this bird design for the plate, which Billy can show you here, right down there. To make the um, image for that, I took birds and then I multiply them. So, and that's shown here. Okay, so I just took a few birds. So you only took a few and then you just kept multiplying. Sure. So here's the image and then we're going to go back to the screen here. And we're going to show you, see how the birds are there? Now yeah. I can also, because I'm on the group tool, when I grab them I get, the, I get a box or I can do the individual. So what I can do is I can copy and paste that and then I have another bird. So what I did was I just kept adding the birds together until I got the pattern that I liked. Love it. So it's really great to be able to um, dissect your artwork because otherwise you can't really make it your own. Right. So there we go. Whoops. And then if you want to actually change the shape, this tool we're going to go in really tight. You're, then this now you're you're on your direct select. Tool. I'm on my direct select tool. Okay. And what that does is it shows you how this is made up, and this is made up of all these dots. So if I, was, if I were to qu click on one dot and pull it, it's going to drag that out. Okay. So I want to make sure that I'm either on the complete selection tool when I move it like this. See how all of these uh, blue circles mm -hmm. will go in real tight so you can see. Yes. Those are points. Okay. So when I click on this and I'm on the direct select, it selects all the points. If I click over here, to the individual and then I click, I've got all of these open. When they're open like this, that means they are not selected. See how if I drag over there, how those are blue? Right. So what that's gonna do is it's only gonna affect the ones that are connected. So if you wanna do distortions, get rid of things or add things, you can collect, select on a particular area like that and you can Using actually change slot. the shape. So um, that's kind of a little bit more advanced, and that's really great. You can come to our workshop, and we'll play with the that's imagery. Right. She's a great teacher, guys. So Susan, has, she does hold workshops, and she has webinars. So make sure you look at her um, website, 
Um, you can go to Glass Heart Magazine. They have um, her webinars on there. So very informational if you want to dive in deep into the fused glass and using the photoresist films. Okay, now I'm going to show you um, how you take this from um, Illustrator and put it in Photoshop. Okay. Now the other thing is, I've already worked on this a few times, so chances are that this image is, um, is black. So I'm going to select that. And, and let me ask you, why are you bringing it into Photoshop? Because you have it in Illustrator. Because I'm more familiar with Photoshop. Okay. So you can print either out of Photoshop or you can print out of Illustrator. Okay. Um, there are a couple of tools that I'm more familiar with in Photoshop, so sometimes I'll take them in just because I'm more confident with that. But also, it depends on your printer. My printer gives me more selection choices, like in Photoshop, in Photoshop than it does in Illustrator. So when I go to print out of Photoshop, it's going to let me add density. It's going to let me do a few things with my printer okay. that I can't do in the other. So that. And your print settings when you go to print are really important because, as Liz will tell right. you, if you don't have a really black black, you're not going to get a great... So you're going to have a hard washout. Yeah, it's going to be tough washout. Sometimes you might not be able to get the film to wash so out. So now to be able to tell if you've got black, I'm going to click on an area here and then I'm going to come over here. And just so you guys know that if you, if you double click on the black, it's going to bring up what you've got. And I have 100% black. There you go, now, CYK. A, a lot of the artwork that you select, if you double click on a dark color, you think, oh, it's black, but it'll be like 90% yellow, 60% um, black. Um, like I said, it's just that I've already worked on this, so I know. So now if I was going to change the color, let's say if I opened it up and this telephone pole, um, oops, that goes gray. If I, the telephone pole I wanted to have red, goes gray again. Okay. You will have to play around a little bit because honestly, uh, like I said, I am not a total expert in this. And you'll find that if you're persistent and you work on it, you're going to yeah. get where you want to go. And that's where practice makes perfect. That's and right. And a lot of times, like asking Google a question. Uh, another reference is lynda.com, um, L Y N D A. Um, they have a lot of um, tutorials when it comes to education on graphic programs. Yeah, they have great tutorials. Yes. A lot of my students have said that they subscribe to that. But now you can see as I take it apart that I've got all three of these, and these are really cool. So I'm going to grab this, I'm going to copy it, okay. and now I'm going to open up Photoshop. And in Photoshop, I can distort it easily, more easily because, again, sure. it's something that I'm familiar with. So when you do make a new document in Photoshop, it's going to take a minute, you're going to want to make sure, uh, let's call it scene, and then you're going to want to make sure you make it the size that you need. So right. I'm going to go uh, eight and a half by 14 because that's the size of my um, film and print my, film. Uh, yeah, my print film. So you definitely want to make it fit your print film. You're going to want it 300 DPI and you absolutely want to make it um, CMYK or grayscale okay. because when I go to look and see how much black there is, if it's um, RGB, there's no black. We're going to do that and say OK. We're going to paste it. And this brings up a window and it says, how do I want to paste? I want a smart object. Okay. So you just hit Command or Control V to paste it yeah. like you would. Okay. Yeah. Just want to make you sure. can go up here and, and do the cut and paste from there too. But anyway, what this does is this puts it into the Photoshop as a vector image which means uh, it's going to be sc totally scalable. So I can reduce it, increase it, or whatever, move it around. Now what you can't do in uh, Photoshop with a vector is you cannot change the color. So do make sure that all of your um, artwork is 100% black before okay. you bring it into uh, Photoshop because um, that you know, can be really problematic. Now, if you want to do a distortion or change a vector in Photoshop, you have to flatten it. So what we're going to do here, and by the way, I didn't mention, but there's, there's all of these menus up here, and you might want to open up your layers window. I actually already have it open, but if I didn't, I'd go to here and go to layers, and that's going to show, show you the, the layers. And then if I want to flatten it, 
I'm going to come down here and I'm going to flatten the image. Now it is no longer um, editable in size, but I'll be able to distort it. So now if I take and draw a box around it and I want to make it um, curved like the glass was, we were talking about that. Right. We're going to go to distort and that's under here. Actually it's transform. Now in transform there's scale, there's rotate, skew, distort, um, warp. Now if you want to do it uh, a basic um, change you could use distort but we were talking about making that really specific so if you go to warp it divides it into sections so now what I would do is I would take that photo that had the curve mm -hmm. and then I can individually take this I can even take it from the center here and I can make this fit whatever I want so like down That's here pretty neat so you can actually if you open up your curve yeah. um, as, a, as an image and then create your artwork to that curve. And then see, you can literally go up and we can curve the bottom and that way if the top of the glass is over here, then I can bring it like that. So then when you wrap it, you're going to get a perfect fit. Right. So, and that's really fun. I mean, this is really a fun aspect. and. I think that it's pretty likely that you can do that in Illustrator, but again, you know, for those of you that haven't done a lot of Photoshop or Illustrator, um, pick what works for you, right. because either one will print, and um, it's just really nice to, that because they're both Adobe that they are compatible, that I can paste right from right. Um, Illustrator into this. And then let's say OK. That's a great tip, just to kind now, of warping that design to fit a curve, and especially if you have text. Now, here's another great part of uh, Photoshop, is Photoshop has history. So let's say, oh, you know what? I decided I didn't want to do that. I can go back. See that how I can pop back from history? Oh, you know, we can't see that. Let's, I'm sorry, drag this down. Okay, I'll let me drag just that down. down. Sorry. There we go. History. Okay. There she so is. here's your history. So on your history, you can go back or you go back to any step. See how that pops back? So now it's a vector again because when I flattened the image, uh, it wasn't. I, usually when I'm uh, flattening the image, it's because I want to make multiples. So let's take this, oops, let's take it right there. And I'll have to click on that layer. It's locked, okay. Oh, that's right, we went back to vector, sorry. Let's go back to flatten image. So you can actually fill up your full page because yeah. you're printing and then you can put different designs. So if you're doing, um, let's say something small like this here, you can put multiple uh, images. So you can do your birds on one side of the inkjet film and your tree branches on another and grass on another. Now see here, because I flattened it, the, it's no longer a, a vector and I can duplicate it. See, so if you're going to make a mask um, that has lots and lots of parts on it, you can just quickly duplicate it this way. So that's right. really um, a nice trick. So, so what we're going to do what, is... Let me ask you this. What printer do you print on? What, what do you use? You know, I've got a couple printers. I actually have a, a photo printer because uh, the photo printer has more colors and it tends to lay down a, a blacker black okay. because it's got like a gray, it's got a dark gray, a light gray, and it's got a black as opposed to a regular printer which may only have a magenta, um, cyan, um, black, and yellow. Inkjet. 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 That's correct. Inkjet. Yes. That, that's, and you want to grab the, um, the mask. And what we're going to do is we are going to take this image. Um, oh, the telephone? Yeah, the telephone pole. And we are going to um, make a mask of this for you because what we've got here is we've got a nice, dense, dark um, image and Liz is going to show you um, how to make the mask. How to make the mask out of this. So you're going to print your artwork onto inkjet film and that's really important. Some people, they're like, hey, it's not working. They're printing on, but I found out they're printing on regular paper. You can't do that. You need to print on an improved 
inkjet film. And the inkjet film allows, this one allows light to pass through the inkjet film to expose the photoresist film. And then what's key here is you want a nice dense print, like Susan was showing us how mm -hmm. to get a dense print. So it blocks the light during exposure. So let me do that for you now. We're gonna take this inkjet film print and we're gonna produce a stencil. So I'm coming over here to my um, little table here to expose this artwork. So you're just gonna take your image, print it onto our inkjet film. I have my scissors here, so I don't need to use a full sheet. I'm just gonna use about a half a sheet here. And you don't have to use scissors, you can use a uh, trimmer. Um, we have great film trimmers that are self-sharpening. That's something that you can use. I'm gonna give you a little tip here. If you have, if you use like a dull razor or dull scissors, and you cut it and it has a jagged edge, when you wash out, water can get between that this clear liner and the blue emulsion. And so that can kind of create a pocket of water, which is, is not fun to deal with and you need to really it's best for you to have sharp scissors so you can have a nice clean edge when you cut your resist shiny side against our blue i'm sorry it's shiny side against our electrolyte blanket we're going to take our artwork ink side face down so the light is going to transfer this image over okay and you can see here we have the light um, is going to pass through the printed artwork exposing the photoresist film if you were to use paper or something that was not approved, light doesn't pass through that clear film. Even though it may look clear, light is not passing through. It's not exposing the film. And that's what you have to keep an eye on. You have to make sure that the light is passing through, that your artwork is dark to block the light. We're gonna expose for 20 seconds. Okay, and that's it, 20 seconds. Now, this is a minute timer. So we wanna make sure um, you, I would connect this to a power strip and turn it off when the power strip, uh, when my timer um, hits 20 seconds. So I'm ready to turn it off by hand. So we wanna make sure we expose right at 20 seconds. What happens when you overexpose? Have you ever overexposed, Susan? Yes. Yes. And what happens? It's hard to wash out, isn't it? That's right. It is, it's really a good idea to try to follow the guideline. Now, occasionally when I overexposed, I was still able to wash it out, but yeah, you wanna get your that timing. That fine detail is where it's going to be a little difficult. So we're gonna wash this out. I'm gonna put this on our white washout board, shiny side against the board. Okay, and put the little strip there. Okay, now we're gonna connect our hose. Okay, so you get when you buy our masking kit or our hose, you also get an adapter that will fit to your faucet. Okay, so this is nice and handy. It can go either way. Um, let's say you want something that's a little more heavy duty. This is like from Home Depot, from Lowe's. So it has like the metal or you know stainless steel fitting that you can use instead of a plastic fitting. So a little more durable. We're gonna take, I'm gonna take my hose, my garden hose fitting. And I have that little rubber gasket in there. I just want to make sure I press it down. Okay. I'm going to tighten this up here. And I'm going to turn on my faucet here. Now my water's pretty cold to start, but we're going to go ahead and start washing this out. Now what I did is I just turned on my, my cold tap. So what I'm finding out, it's better to have pressure even though and instead of just hot water. So I want to make sure that I have pressure. Pressure is key to washing out my stencil. And you want your stencil to be, or even, sorry, you want your hose or your nozzle to be about two inches, one to two inches from the mask. Hopefully you can kind of see that. We're just starting to dissolve the film here. If you have hot or warm water even, your film will dissolve much faster. But right now I'm using very cold water.
And this is our three mil, so SR3000 three mil. It's a self stick film, exposed for 20 seconds. For those of you that have the Luminex, it's a six second exposure time. So you're starting to see that blue residue dissolve, turn white. And she has some really thin lines right in here. I'm just trying to open these up. Yeah, actually some of those are just disappear because that's just the way that the image is. Okay. So here I'm trying to wash them out, but they're supposed to disappear. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and stop here. Does that look? It looks great. It looks great. All right. So this is completely washed. What I like is having the white board, the metal board, because it provides a contrast so you are able to identify when your film is washed out. You don't want to overwash. You want to make sure that we wash until our um, design is clear. So let me pull this off here. This sticks really well. And once it's washed out, um, you know you don't have to worry about the light exposure. The film is light sensitive until after it's washed out. Okay, so we're just going to let this dry. As it dries, it becomes um, sticky or tacky. And we'll just let it set it over here and let this dry. You know, sometimes I hang them up on the edge of a table or on a little line. And if you want it to be quicker uh, and you don't have the automatic dryer that they right. sell, I would put a hair dryer um, sitting on a chair and then uh, have it blow up against it and Just then make sure it's it's tacked down though yeah make sure it's tacked <laughs> down because i'll hang it up and then i'll put like a little uh clip on the bottom to weight it and then you can get it to dry pretty okay. quickly Very so nice. it's an alternative yes. but anyway we just wanted to say you know creating the artwork you know working in photoshop and working in illustrator is um fun once you get you know Get started. It, it may be a little daunting at the first, but create, creative. Yeah, but getting creative and creating your own imagery uh, or combining imagery is just so important in making cool pieces. So um, go to those resources, Dafont, to get some great right. type that you can use that you can add in and go to Adobe or another vector site. And now that you know how to dissect it a little bit in Illustrator, you can start to combine your images and make totally original things. Yes. So like your postcards, like my flying birds, basically um, it's, it's limitless. Endless, yes. It's limitless what you, what can, you can do. do. So right. I'm so glad that you guys tuned in. And if you'd like to know more about you know, fusing, more about enameling, come and take a resist workshop with me. Right. It's two days, it's intensive, and you will learn a lot. She has a great studio set up with all these fun gadgets and tools, like tools, endless amount of tools, and so much glass and glass powders and frit and you name it, she has it. But I just want to thank you for spending. Sure. You spent a couple hours with us today, probably yep. half a day, because we did two sessions in one day, one live, and this one recorded. But you know what? Send in your questions because we're still going to be monitoring. So make sure you send in all of your questions. Susan will be available to help out with answering some of those. And we will get to you. Um, just send, them, send us your questions. Go to raises.com and let us know if you have any questions. We use 3 mil today and we use inkjet film yep. on fused glass. So we will see you soon. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Susan. Sure. Really appreciate your time and your knowledge and yeah, your expertise. And if you, um, if you want to see kind of like a lot more of what I do with the Resist, you can go to firefusionstudio.com and you can see all of the great pieces that I have uh, created with the Resist film and the sand blasting. Yes. She was actually named, I'm going to brag on her a little bit, she was named one of the um, top 10 uh, artists in San Diego. Artists, not just glass artists, but artists in San Diego. So that's quite an accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. Um, learn sand carving with Resist Photo Mask. And we've ended session 16. So um, stay tuned. We have something special coming out at you soon. So we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much for joining us.